Hi, and welcome back to Quinoa Pod Creations tutorial videos. And today we have our live Zoom beading circle session where we had a guest teacher. So my niece, Bobby White, is going to show us how she prepares her fedora hat for beading and showing us her skills, techniques, and quick tips. And so I hope you all enjoy this video. Thank you for coming. I've never, I've done one Zoom class in my lifetime, so we're going to just go with it and um, see how well we can do. Um, but I want to thank my aunt. She asked me to teach, and I, I volunteered a couple times, but then I always forget about the class because um, I I like to travel to powwows, so my family's always gone to powwows, and she asked me a couple weeks ago, and I think I was I was teaching a class on the Sunday that she needed me to. So I was like, I'll do another day. And so then it took me a while to figure out what kind of, she's already taught you guys everything, all the different other um, activities. So I was like, man, I don't know what I can teach. And then I thought, oh, I'll teach the fedora hats. So this is the hat I'm gonna work on today. And then I'll quickly show you a hat that I've done. I'm not a perfect, I'm not, I just try my best to to create things and I made this one for my daughter. This is just a simple design. I did one one main color and then I did the fire colors in let's see where am I pointing? Fire colors in there. I did white, yellow, orange, red, black, and then I put a gold in there. So my first hat was just simple design. But the difference was to have a hat stand. And um, I left my hat stand at work, but we're going to use it without it. So um, a hat stand will make a whole lot of a difference if you're going to decide to be uh, to bead fedora hats. You can get on Amazon and buy them for like twelve dollars, twenty five dollars, and it just your hat sits on the stand and it's easier to bead. It's easier for me. It was easier. So, um, but I did learn a new trick for my mom. We were struggling in our class. Um, I did another hat and you have the front of your hat. So this, you usually find, sometimes in the hats, there'll be um, a front and a back or they'll say front and back, but this one doesn't. So the front part is right here and the back is right here where my tag is, okay? So um, when we were, when I made my second hat, I did my design and I started right at the front. And then I went all the way around and beaded the whole hat all the way around. And I got almost over here to the other side and my whole design was off. So then I got irritated and I let it sit there for a month. And every day I looked at the hat and I couldn't figure it out. I couldn't figure it out. And then I tore it all the way out. And then I called a friend and she told me just tear out half and then I repositioned my beads and I don't know how it worked. Somehow it worked and I have no clue how, but it worked out and my hat looked good. Originally, I would take um, a, a paper bag and I will first mark right here. I'll mark front so I know that this is the front. I don't think you can see that. And then I'll just put the word back here. And then I'm going to take my hat and I'm going to lay it down and so we'll take a pencil and you'll just draw you want to make sure you don't use a pen or a, or a sharpie because you'll sharp you'll mark the you'll get the sharpie on your fedora hat so make sure your pen is straight up not at an angle but straight up and mark your fedora hat Okay, there's my circle. I don't think, I don't know if you can see it, but I, then we're gonna get a, grab a ruler. I guess I should have told you guys supply is really quick. So you'll need a, a pencil, a ruler. I have scissors to cut my thread. I have paper scissors to cut my paper sack. I use a pliers. Sometimes you'll need a pliers to pull your string through. I have 
a blue pen. The blue pen is to mark on material and then it disappears. And then uh, this is a, beady, a bead breaker. Sometimes you need to break a bead. Sometimes when you're beading and, you, and you're counting your beads and you put 18 beads on there and it was only supposed to be 17, instead of tearing it out, you can take your bead breaker and, be and just break a bead, which is better than pulling it all out. So um, then I have size 10 beading needles. Or, or size 11s, depending on what size beads that you use. And then you have your beads. So um, this is a bead. Um, my mom gave it to me, and I always struggle with design. I, I can be, if you design it, I can beat it. But if you ask me to design, yeah, that takes me forever. So um, my mom gave me this beading palette and it had all these beads in there and I'm like oh man this is a perfect order so it has the perfect so this is my order that I'm going to put on the beaded hat so you can use two colors one color or you can use them all and I think I'm going to what I'm going to do is I'm going to use white as a background and I'm going to just make it a simple color yeah I think somebody said parchment paper you can use parchment paper or butcher paper um, but um, I just used the, a paper sack because that's what I had. Um, I'm just going to use this design today. So if you guys want to just be, oh, wait, before we move it off, we're going to take our ruler and you're going to figure out from your, move it this way so you can see. You're going to put the ruler right here to the end and then right where your seam is or right where your, um, thread is where you're, you'll see your thread right here. That's where you want to figure out how long your, your um, space is. We're measuring this space right here from the hat to the stitch, to the stitch on the hat. You're going to measure that and then you're going to and you're going to move your hat and then you're going to Mark it right here and then mark it all the way around or mark it in spots where you can um, cut it or it looks like it's probably about a half an inch for me. So then I'm going to just take this and go halfway and just mark it all the way around. Because so I'm, I'm going to end it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this. And if you have another way to do it and you do a way that's comfortable for you, Please go ahead and chime in and tell us if you want. Um, so now from the stitch line to here to the end of your hat is like a half an inch. Does that make sense right here? Okay, so that's what I need to be measuring then. Yeah, then I want you to measure it in here because then we're gonna cut we're gonna cut this out. I'm just gonna draw this. We're gonna cut this and make a hole. And I wanna okay. make sure that this to here is three inches. So then when you get to your this is your stitch line right here. Does that make right yes. Here's your stitch line. So we're kind of just making an invisible, well, not an invisible stitch line. And then from your stitch line, you're going to go in to the three inches. Okay. And once you make from your stitch line, then you're going to mark three inches. And then you'll take your paper scissors. Well, after you... After you mark your three inches, then you're gonna just connect your dots. So then you can take your paper scissors and you can first cut out your, your hat on your first line up here. Your first, our first um, pin mark is on our hat. So we're gonna cut out our hat. Then I would just quickly take from the front where I, right here I put front on the out, can you see that? I put front on the outside outside and so now I probably should put front in here so I because I'm going to cut that word off and then I'm going to I don't want to lose which side's the front see see where your are so the sewing stitches you can see that sewing thread where the sewing machine is on your hat yeah I see it okay and yes, then from mm -hmm. that to the outside is approximately a half an inch so that's where you're half an inch so when you're drawing your hat and we drew it on the outside, 
from this, we're creating that half inch is that stitch. So this is your stitch line, but we're put, yeah. However you measure in your half, Thank quarter you. of an inch, half an inch. That's what All right, that do. clears it up. Thank you. Okay, sorry. Then you're going to take and fold. Oh, make sure you write your frame back. I almost lost it again. I'm going to write it. Okay, um, fold your front to back. You want to cut right here, you can cut right here. Or some people want to cut further and fold it in half again and fold it until it looks like a piece of pizza. Oh, don't mind my um, my beautiful Merry Christmas. I haven't had a chance to, I can't find a new tablecloth. I've looked. So um, the three inch mark, so we have our half inch right here. This is our stitch line. And then this three inch mark right here is where we're gonna cut, okay? So now you're gonna just take and cut this. Now we got two pieces right here. We cut it off. We're gonna throw this smaller pizza, piece of pizza away. And you're gonna open it up. And then you have a hole. It should fit. If it doesn't fit, then we'll make it. Oh, it's cramped. Here's my hat. So then it should fit on there. If it doesn't fit on there, you need to, I think I need to go a little. Just make your quick adjustments and just cut it. I should have went with that first cut and I didn't. So. so there's your hat. And it fits perfectly on your hat. Now, the only reason we're doing this is because remember I said that my my design was off. Now you just lay it on there and that's your hat, okay? <laughs> so we halved it here and then you halved it again and then you halved it. So this is, when you lay it out, you wanna, you wanna make sure you put your creases in here. And then this is your beading section, see this? So this is one section, one section, one section. So all you perfectionists who have to, <clears throat> there are some people who are perfectionists. So these are all your beading sections so that you don't have to worry about um, your design being off. So then when you lay this out, now you can, on the last cat, I laid this out like this. And then I took my blue marker, where's my blue marker? This is called a water soluble ink. And you can find this at Joanne Fabrics. You can find this at Walmart and it's a fine point called Mark Be Gone. So when you um, put it, use it on your materials, you can, it'll, it'll disappear on its own after a certain amount of wear and tear, or you can take it, I'm gonna just mark it right here. You can, there's my mark. I don't know if you can see that, marked it right there. And then you can just um, lightly put a little bit of wet your finger and, and and put a little wet on it and then it disappears. So this is perfect for mark, for making moccasins, doing any of your beadwork for your designs. So I just take it and based off of my, my patterns, then I'll just, and my creases. So here's my creases. So if you wanted to, you can cut, and I think you should, you can connect your dots on your, um, your half an inch, connect your dots and then cut that off. So that your, so that your, your paper, your paper sack is going to sit right here. Your paper sack is going to sit right on that. What is that called? Your sewing line or that sewing thread? Seam line. Or that... Seam line. Yeah. Your seam line. There you go. So that your paper is going to fit right on that seam line. And then right where your where your paper folds, then you can mark. Or if you want to just leave it, you can mark it and be like, okay, so this is where I'm going to use this mark be gone. And then I'm going to flip over here to the other side and I'm going to mark my hat. And I'm going to mark it where my back is.
And then I mark both sides. I'm going to go to the front and I'm going to mark the front. I'm just going to make my marks so that you guys, I'm going to see if I can make them so you guys can see them. Okay, so here's my front mark right here. And that's my front, back, and my left, and my right. Okay, so remember, remember, then I'm going to go back over here really quick. And so wherever there was a fold in your paper, we're going to make that mark. We're going to, okay, so I marked where my folds were. So we folded it in half. So I put my pencil line here so you guys can see it. And then we folded it again. So then I put my pencil line where you can see it. And then I folded it again. So now my hat is evenly proportioned. Is that what you want to say? So now when I get ready to bead my design, I want my design to be within this area so that it matches this area over here. Um, I've marked it. So if you if you can't see it, I've marked this is my front. This is my back. This is my right side, my left side. And then I have opposite over here. I made sure I made my marks so that they're even all the way across. So I want my design to be whatever my design is here. I can flip over and go over here. Don't start at the front, start at the side. And then whatever design you put in this area, then I want you to stop and I want you to bounce over here directly across and do the same design so that your designs are the same all the way across. Then when you go to do the next design, start, um, start over here on the right side over here and then flip over to this side and do the same design on that side. And then all your designs should be the exact same in those areas. So your pizza slice, this is just one example that one of my coworkers did because she was like, how am I gonna figure this out? So she went and did this on her pizza slice. So she went from her one, one to one corner. So here's her pizza slice on this piece of paper. Then she counted out her beads. Like this is her, she went one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. She went one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. She went seven. This is the top part. And then the, this is the back part or this is the halfway. So she did seven, I think it was 15 beads. So I think she started out with seven on the top and then this was the last seven. So then what she did was she sat here. So she went and colored each one of these. Each square is a bead. You'll have to figure out your count of a bead here in a second, but once you start getting the design of your, um, like I bought the same design hat, so I know scissors on there. Sorry, my kids are trying to cut. Um, I know that I'm going to use 18 beads or 17 beads on the hat. However, if you're using different size beads on your fedora hat, you, I wouldn't recommend that you do that but I was in a situation where I really wanted to use um, a gold bead and the only gold bead I had was a size 10. So I used 17 beads. So um, I'm just gonna show this hat to you guys. When you flip your hat over, there's this piece right here where the, um, where the seam goes through the sewing machine. And I like to go right through the line. I already like to, I don't want to create another hole. So I just go exactly where the thread is, where the thread. Well, thanks for coming and, and hope you enjoyed the first part of um, beating a fedora hat. This is just part one of preparing your hat for beading. Then in the next video, we will be demonstrating how to um, beat it. Um, so I made another 
video. So I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned a lot. And please join us for our next video. If you would like, you can come and join my beading circle group at any time. And also, I usually have the kits that we use for different projects in my Etsy shop at www.quinwapawcreations.etsy.com. So I appreciate you coming by and hope you enjoyed it. See you in the next video. Thank you.